Oh, bloody no, David. No, no, just l listen to me for a second. Calm down, George. No, I won't calm down, David, right? I've had enough of this. And you know I'm right. It's bloody Tim. It's Tim, and that's it. We don't know that for certain. You can't just keep telling me that you know it's somebody. You've not got proof. Bloody proof? I don't need proof. It's bloody him. Who else would write a letter like that? The problems we've had with him. Come on, David. Switch your bloody brain on. We both know it's him. Everyone knows it's him. George, calm down. I can't do anything. I'll have to follow the law. My hand's tied down her back. Bloody hell, it's in a right, this thing. It's in a right. Just give me a bit more respect. I bloody do respect you, David. You know that. But, I, I mean, come the bloody hell on. My friends had a letter like that. We know it's Tim for a fact. He put my name in that letter and he'd do that and you know he would. It's right up his street. That letter is not evidence, so George. How am I going to do anything with that? You want me to go and find Tim and arrest him for that? I bloody do, huh? Well, I can't do that, can I? Think about it. What's in that letter that makes you certain that it's Tim? Because I bloody know the guy. And how the hell is that going to help me in a court, George? How? I'm going to take that to the CPS and what are they going to say? Bugger the CPS, that's what they'll say. Well, they should just bloody do the jobs. Do you on about me do my job? Don't, don't I get sensitive now, David? I'm not. You need to calm down. You worry me, George, and I'm here to just listen to you, but you're really worrying me. I think you're going to take this for everything you need to do. You need to let the police do the job. Let me do my job. Well, bloody do it then, because I've got Ross, who's bloody had letters like that threatening. He's mentioning there there's something to do with bloody fire. Can you imagine if he set something on fire around here? Honestly, it's not like you're going to be out there on the beat, is it, preventing this from happening? What do you expect me and Scroft think? We're bloody petrified. He's got his missus working on the farm and everything. Now, I'm bloody putting my foot down here, David. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm looking after me own. You need to calm down and let us handle this. Handle it? You've done bugger all. I told you about this letter. What have you done? We've taken the letter and we're doing fingerprint analysis right now. We have Tim's fingerprints on record. You already know this. If it's on there we can go and do something about it. But until then, you need to calm down, focus on your farm, and if anything happens, give me a call. Oh, well, that's bloody clever, isn't it? If anything happens, so what are you saying? If someone comes and sets a bloody fire here, then that's it. Oh, unlucky, you know, and I'll bloody ring you up. How does that? That's bloody pathetic, and you know it is. George, I've had enough of this now. You're either on our side or you're not. Well, bloody hell, say the same to you. Are you bloody on my side? Are you on any of these farmer sides round here? George, I expected better from you. You're a parish councillor. Now start acting like one. Uh, you cheeky bugger, David. Don't bloody speak to me like I don't care if you've got that badge on your chest coming in my home talking to me like that. Honestly, I'm not happy and you can tell. I can tell, but at the same time, you're making it difficult for me. We know each other. We know each other well. We got a few pints at the pub together, George, but at the end of the day, I'm a police officer and I'm trying to do my job. Of course I want to look after Ross. Of course I want to look after you and your farm. And if it is Tim, we'll bring the full force of the law at him. Well, I bloody hope so. Where is he? I can't answer that, George, and you know that. You must be able to give me something, David. Come on. Like, his house is up for sale. I'm not a bloody idiot. I can see that. Yeah, OK. So... Has he sold it? You know I can't answer them questions. I can't indulge in personal information like that. Well, surely you bloody must. Last time I know, he's got community service. You know I can't talk about that either. Bloody hell, David. Just give me something. If it's in Tim, then it's someone else and I want to know what I'm looking out for. My advice would be to just check your security on the farm. If there's anything you can do to improve it, then do it. Even if it's just for peace of mind, we'll keep a close eye out. We're on your side, George. Who the bloody hell is this we? I'm on your side, then. And I'll do anything I can to help this and put it and bloody make sure nothing happens. I bloody hope you're right, David. Honestly. Oh, God. You've got to give me... You must be able to bloody tell me something, David. Come on. Well, I'll just... I'll put it this way to you. We know his house is up for sale. We know he's sold it. Right? Sign outside. Is he still living in that house? Just tell me that. That's all I need to know. Because if you don't, I'll go knock on anyway. 
Uh, don't be doing things like that, George. Then answer me question, David, or I bloody will. He doesn't live in that property anymore. Bloody hell, do you even know where he is? All we know is he's moved out the area. Bloody hell, so he could be anywhere, and it could be him? Potentially. But it could be someone else, George, until we've got some hard facts and who this is, who's sending these threatening letters, there's not much I can do about it. I need more to go on. I need to get my head down and try and figure this out. Ah, uh, and bloody do it quick, because I'm telling you, David, and I don't mean put this on your shoulders, but you've got to feel the burden to this. If something happens, someone gets hurt, or bloody, for God forbid, someone loses a farm out of all this, I'm telling you, it'll be on you, and it'll be on the bloody police that didn't do the job. So get out there, day and night, and get on the beat and find this bloody bugger, because if you don't, I will. George, leave it to me and leave it to the police. I have to say this, I'm only going to give you one warning here, George. If you take matters into your own hands, it'll be you that gets locked up. Bloody hell. Well, then you do your job and I won't need do it. Please, George. Please, listen to me. Leave it to us. Don't take matters into your own hands. I'm begging you, because I will. I'll knock on your door and I'll take you straight in that cell and make sure you don't. Whatever, because I tell you this now, I aren't afraid of looking after me own, and if someone dares come on this farm and does bloody anything to me, or any, or any of us, whether it be Scroft or a bloody Beanie, I'm telling you, I'll bloody go to the next level, and I'll do the time and I'll bloody happily do it. Right, George, I'm going to go. Try and stay calm for me. Don't do anything stupid, and if you get anything, hear anything, see anything... Just call me. You've got my mobile. Call me. I'll answer any time. Doesn't matter when it is, just call me. Oh. Uh. See you later. See you, David. See you, Scroft. Make sure he doesn't do anything. I can't promise anything, but I'll try my best. Okay. okay. See, you See you later, later George. George. Oh. Oh, Scroft, bloody hell fire. Bloody hell, George. How'd you get away with talking to coppers like that? <laughs> Copper, he had bloody had pint with him. I've seen him I've seen him legless. He's had twelve pints for me, he has. Don't even bloody see him for that. He puts that uniform on, he's supposed to be a different person. Bugger that. I remember when we were bloody necking whiskey. I know him, he's a good lad, but still. Bloody hell, I'll speak to anyone the way I want, especially when it comes to things like this. I just want them to know. You know, it's about bloody drilling it into their head how important this is. That letter's bloody worried me. It really has, Scroft. I mean, think about it. The mention of fire. God almighty, if someone bloody hurts my animals, I'll bloody murder them. I'll murder them. I tell you, I'll do the bloody time. It's in again come to that, George. I bloody hope not. Why is there always some bloody bugger everywhere you live? Why? God, all I want is a bloody easy life. Peace of mind. You know, why can't we just do that? You come, you do your job, you come home, you've got the fine things in life you look forward to, like a cup of tea, a few donuts, watching mash, what the bloody heavy. <laughs> but no, bloody hell, I just want an easy life. We're, we've got one, George. We're doing well. Well, someone not like us. No, I know, but still. Right, anyway. What are you doing now? I'm walkie dorky. Oh, George, you're not doing something, are you? Just butt out if you don't want to get involved. Roger, Roger. Are you there? I'm bloody here. Are you bloody in position? I'm bloody in position. Have you seen anything? I haven't seen a bloody thing. Well, I've just heard he doesn't live there anymore. Ah, oh, bloody hell, fat. So I've been sitting outside this house for bloody five hours. Are you kidding me? Honest to God, bloody hell, George, you could have told me that before. I couldn't tell you before. I had a bloody copper sitting in my front room drinking tea out one of me mugs. I want to go and see it then, am I? Use your bloody noggin over there, Ross. Well, fuck it then. I'll be... I'm leaving, bloody hell. Ah, head down here. Well, I need a good chat. I didn't tell you anything. I want to say anything over here. They might bloody interfere with it, so... Just, just head to the bloody kitchen. I'm there. All right, and I'm on my way.
You in a bit. Bloody hell, George, what have you done? Do you want to get involved then if you're not, if you're bloody scared? I aren't scared, George. I just don't want you to do nothing stupid. I'm not doing anything stupid. All I asked Ross was to do was just, you know, have a little bit of a secluded spot. If anyone asks, he was just, you know, having a bit of a rest. What, in a bush? Well, well, sometimes we sleep in bushes. No one bloody sleeps in a bush, George. Honestly, you got to think about bushes. You're always either in them or telling people get in them. <laughs> you off, off. So what's he doing? He's just in bush outside, bloody. Tim's old place told him just, you know, keep a look out. Well, police are here. You know, I said to him this morning, head up there, have a look out, see if you can see him come and go. But I guess it adds up with what bloody David just said. You know, he ain't there anymore. Damn, George, you've got so many questions. Ah, and no bloody answers. Right, anyway, right, get kettle on. I'm going to make a few crumpet surprises. We'll sit down. I'll make some for Ross as well. You know, put a smile back on his face. He's been sitting in the bush for five hours. Christ. <laughs> crumpet surprise, I'll sort that out. And we're going to sit down and we're going to bloody sort this out. And if I have to bring fellowship back together, we'll do it with a bang. You ain't got a chance now. What you on about? Well, Jerry ain't going to do anything. I'm telling you now. Every time I spoke to Jerry, no, he don't want nothing to do with it anymore, George. If someone's in trouble, he'll be there. You know, you're a bit right, still, but I promise you, Jerry's a good man. He's a good man. If one of us gets in trouble, he'll be there. Yeah, but... If you've got some crazy idea, he ain't going to be up for it. Listen, get the kettle on, and I'll make crumpet surprises, right? We'll chat when bloody Ross is here. It's him that got the bloody letter. I know. You worrying me, George? Don't I'm fine. I am. I've got my bloody head screwed on. I have. It's the rest of you that are not. Honestly, what happened to a man having the bloody right to defend himself and his and his bloody property and his land? Yeah, George, it's different though. We've got police officers. You know, they do the job for us. Ah, but if someone bloody comes on here, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it'll be like he won't want know what bloody hits him. I don't like this side to you, George. Well. What's needed is bloody needed. All right. Are you up? Was that him? I think so. I heard the door. What? Are you there? We're in the kitchen. All right. What's wrong with you? Eh. Uh, what was wrong? Eh. Uh, bloody hell, spit it out, Ross. I, I, I bloody... That, I met that David. What do you mean you met David? What have you done? Did he did he see you? Maybe. Oh, bloody hell, Ross, what happened? Well, don't I start shouting first off. I don't want no grief. I've been stuck in that bush for five hours. I don't want your grief from it, Christ. Listen, just tell me what happened so I know what to do next. Well, I might have parked my car... You know, by the windmill where that Bamwell sign is. But I put it behind the edge. Okay. And, uh After I got off phone with you, I walked in my car and... He would park by it. Oh, bloody hell fire. What did you say to him? Well, it was what he said to me. He was like, why have you been outside Tim's old house? And I, and I said to him... Pretty silly, really, but I told him I was walking my dog. But you didn't have a dog. I know. He said that. He said, where's your dog? I said it ran off. Bloody hell fired, Ross. Is that the best you could do? I bloody panicked. What am I supposed to bloody do? I didn't expect a copper waiting for me there. And I just thought, oh, I'm dog walking. But then I realised after I said it, I don't even have a bloody dog. Oh, for God's sake, Ross. You know, mastermind, are you? All you had to say was... Anything you could have said anything going for a walk without a bloody dog. You could have said you were bloody bird watching for all I care, but bloody hell walking a dog when you haven't even got one. What is wrong with you? I don't know. I don't like that stuff. It, I was under pressure. And I just I don't handle it. Bloody hell fire. Right, bugger it. Did what did you say to you after that? Well he just didn't believe me and I just said I was only having a look, just see if he's about. 
He told me I couldn't go back there and asked you to arrest me. Well, bugger him then. Bugger him. Anyway, take that plate from side. You got, you got some food there for you. And a brew. Ah, nice one, George. Is it still warm? Ah, it should be, yeah. Come sit down and eat your food. Christ, walking a dog. Honestly. I know. Well, it made sense at time. Don't laugh, Stra. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Bloody hell, that was lovely, that was. What's that? We call it the Crumpet Surprise. Well, I call it the Crumpet Surprise. It's basically a giant crumpet, right? You put an egg on it, some beans, a few pieces of bacon, then you put another crumpet on top. It's like a sandwich, but made out of crumpets, and I call it the Crumpet Surprise. Well, bloody hell, that surprised me. Probably have a surprise heart attack as well after, but it's bloody worth it. Listen, right, tin of that bad. You don't eat them daily, though, do you, George? Well, not daily, but maybe every other day. Bloody hell, fire, how's he living? Honestly. Honest, tell me your trick, mate. Your, your bloody blood pressure must be a skyrocket. I feel sorry for the blood pressure monitor. Probably breaks every time it touches your arm. Right, listen, shut up. At least you didn't say I was walking a dog and I didn't even have one. What is it, an invisible dog, you bloody clown? Ah, oh, yeah, that's bloody true, ah. Uh. Right, what, what's happening anyway? What did he say? Oh, you don't want no, mate. I'm telling you, it didn't go well. Uh, it didn't go bad. It didn't go bad. Your bloody shouted at a copper. And he basically told that copper that it's bloody useless. And that he best do his job or else he's going to go out and do it for him. Oh, you didn't do that. Bloody hell, Judge. All you're doing is shining a torch on us. Well, I was bloody angry. Dennis Smart, that ain't. Oh, bloody hell. Maybe not, but still. I just need calm down. Maybe it won't wise do. I don't know. At the time, it just felt right. I was venting. I was getting it off my bloody chest. Listen, Ross, we haven't seen eye to eye, we, me and you haven't, from day one, and I get that, right? We get on each other's back, but you're my friend. And someone threatened you, and I wouldn't be having it. I got your back, mate. I got it. So, I'm telling you this now. Nothing will ever hurt any of you while I'm around. And I'll stand by that forever. All right, and George, don't worry, mate. Oh, nice one, George. I'm glad we're friends now. I am. But we'll figure this out. We'll get through it, mate. Whatever it is. And I, I, the thing I'm focusing on is nothing's happened yet. And hopefully nothing bloody does happen. Oh, hopefully. But I agree. We need to step up, don't we? I think we, what we do is get some bloody cameras. You get, you're going to have to get some, George. I am. Oh, we'll do. Yeah. I mean, I'm worried about Beanie, mate. Ah, bloody Beanie. Don't get me started on that, I'm telling you. Bloody anything happened to Beanie, I'd bloody... Oh, uh, there won't be anything that can stop me after that. I'll be like a bloody whirlwind. No, I've got a back, George. I know, I know. Well, I've got everyone else's back as well. In fact, we've all got each other's back. Ah, we have. I just don't know why they don't like us. I mean, from that bloody... letter... I could tell straight away he doesn't like me because I'm helping farmers. Oh, it's definitely got something to do with farming. He doesn't like farming. But it sounded like a group, George. I mean, the latter want just one person. I know. He's probably got a bloody band of them now, hasn't he? Some bloody nutters in a band. Oh, God, can you imagine it? Ah, uh, probably. Think it could be someone else? No, I don't know. I hope bloody not, or else it's more questions. If it is, Tim, at least we know who it is, and... Ah, uh, he don't frighten me. What frightens me is how bloody nuts he is. Because he could do anything. But bloody hell, I hope it's not someone else. I don't think it could be, George. The only problem we've ever had is Tim. And you know what he's like. We've heard things in the past from him. You know, the odd thing here and there that's... Highlighted to me that he don't like farming at all. Oh, which matches up with the letter. Ah, that's true. You don't, and I think he's a bit like... 
you know, he favours the environmentalist side, doesn't he? Ah, but so do I. I want to try to do stuff that saves money, that saves the environment, reduces fuel costs, all that stuff. But bloody hell, I'm trying to run a farm. It's a livelihood. Without farmers, no one would bloody be fed. People forget that too quick. Because they live in these bloody cities, they don't know what it is, and you ask them where beef come from, they think it comes from supermarket. They don't see the other side of it. Bloody hell, it's all about education. What happened to the world? Ah, oh, George, I think that's a conversation you could be having for days. Well... Uh, I don't know, but but if we look at it and dissect it, which is what I think we should be doing, it definitely is farming and all farmers around. It's not just bloody me. And I think they're gone for me because I'm an easy target. I'm on my own. You're not an easy target, I've told you. We're bloody together. We're in this together and you've, I've got your back. You can call me any time you want, Ross. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I don't care if I'm bloody anywhere. I'll bloody drop it first thing and come straight to you. Ah, oh, well, I appreciate that, George. I'll oh, bloody ring you, don't worry about that. Oh, uh, anyway, what a bloody day. I know, ah. Uh. Well, how about you stay here, Ross? Stay the night as well if you want. You only got to work, do, have you? Eh, got a couple of jobs, but I'll tell you what then. Go use that bloody workshop out there if you can do it here. You can use it, stay here for a couple of days. Use that bloody workshop and we'll watch each other's back, eh? Eh. Now, I don't want burden you like that, George. It ain't a burden. I'm bloody offering. At least think about it. All right, then. I'll, I'll bloody think about it. I'll stay for the rest of the day at least, but I'll think about it. What about you, Scroft? <sighs> My day's gone out the window, mate. You're supposed to be up there for ATM. It's nine. I know. I know. Seemed a bit... You know, I just couldn't race off, could I? Well, we're going to have to tell Jerry anyway, so you should go down. I will do. I will. I will. I might go out clean off the harvester first and the trailer. Well, we'll do that later on. Don't worry about it. No, I'll go out. I'll go out and check on it. It's been you, right? Yeah, I told her just to keep, keep a close eye on everything and... She's going to ring me if I need, she needs me at all, but if I go Jerry, so I've told her to ring you. Well, I'll read them. I'll keep going out, check on her, more than normal. Thanks, George. I'm hoping it's nothing. I'm hoping it's just a stupid threat, just to try and do what it's done to us. What do you mean by that? Well, it's bloody scared us, hasn't it? <laughs> I ain't scared. I think you might be, George. I know I am. And I am too. A little bit anyway. Just feels a bit uneasy, not knowing, and who the bloody hell hates us, and why do they hate us? We aren't that bad, are we? We aren't bad at all. Ignore them. Well, I got that thing hunter in September. A lot of people there, farmers, back us up. Well, I just wish they bloody show the face at that point, cowards. <laughs> but they wanna. Anyway, we've chatted long enough. Ah, we have. Get out, do that thing, go keep Jerry happy, eh? All right, and George. Last one for the food. Ah, oh, no worries. Hey, keep your phone on loud. This goes to all of us. If you need me, call me. If I need you, I'll bloody call you. Definitely call me. Ah. Oh. Right, see you in a bit then. Ah, right, see you in a bit. Stay safe. Well, do, mate. Don't worry, I'm all right. See you in a bit, Ross. Ah, see you in a bit. Right, so let's go get this cleaned off. George ain't happy. I don't think I've ever seen him that angry before. It takes a lot of nerve to speak like that to a police officer. But you could see the passion in his voice. It's not, you know, it's not through anything bad. It's definitely just through passion. So I hope, I hope to God we fix this problem. If it is Tim, it needs to be sorted out. Just just get it sorted. This can't keep going on. It's just like George said, we just want an easy life, we just want to be left alone and we just want to work hard. You know, and do our part. That's it. But some people just got 
sad lives and that's all they need to do. You get the kicks in casualty. Hello? Hey up Jerry, it's Groff. Hey up, you right? Yeah, I'm good mate, I'm good. Oh, you didn't turn up, I, I, I would not done a few fields. I know, I'm sorry mate, I was supposed to be there early. Oh, I don't know, you're only a couple hours late, aren't you? I'll be honest, I started anyway about five. Did you? Oh, I wouldn't try to doubt. Got it last night. <laughs> Bloody hellfire. Hey, let me tell you this. Scroff, you gonna love this, I'm telling you. Some some adult future. It's like it's got wings. <laughs> A bailer with wings? Bloody hell. <laughs> Next it'll be automated, you won't have to do anything. Uh, hope so. <laughs> Are you coming down then still? Yeah. I'll let you know what's happened, uh, but George ain't happy. Oh, God, no. Oh, no. What's happened? I'll, it's a long story. I'll tell you when I'm there, but you're not going to like it. Oh, no. It's not what I think it is, is it? A bit of it is. Uh, oh, God. All right, and well, that's that, and I'll see you later then. Just head down, and for, I've got three fields left if you want to do them. Yeah, I'll do them, honestly. Doom, you obviously don't have to pay me like you were going to pay me. But, yeah, whatever you think's fair after I've done it. Far it then. See you soon. See you soon, Jerry. Bye. Tra. <laughs> Sounds like a decent bailer then. To try it out. Wonder which one he's gone with. <laughs> he's got wings, I don't think I've ever seen it before. <laughs> It's the bat bailer. <laughs> it's not the Batmobile, he's got a bat bailer with wings. <laughs> right, that's all cleaned off. Yeah, we'll leave them like that. That should be alright. I'll sort it out later on when we get back. Gotta get this job done for Jerry. I did promise him. Park everything up. He needs to get security cameras though. He definitely does. We'll have to see if uh I've seen one I'm sure he'll get a quote or something. Anyway, let's go try this bailing out. Just get back to normality a bit. Yeah, that's probably the best thing for any of us. And at least Ross is here with, with George. Beanie should be fine. But she's she's a smart girl. She can she knows what to do. And hopefully nothing'll happen anyway. George has got to be worried now. He really has. It's going to be hard not to look, but I'm going to have to have a quick look. It definitely says sold. Yeah, there's no one there. He's right. I don't know what else to do, though. I mean... I wonder if it... You know, if it, if it isn't... If it isn't, Tim... We are going to be really struggling. Because... We don't know anyone else that doesn't actually get on with us. We've never had any other problems with anybody. I mean, we had that little little tiffs in t with Tony back in Carms and but nothing to this extent Tony would never do anything like that he's alright he's all right, Tony isn't he he used to be friends you know they'd never do anything like that to each other I oh, don't know wow size of that thing. Great, Jerry. Hey, up. <laughs> that was quick. Quicker than I thought. As soon as you said you had the, the bat bailer. <laughs> the bat bailer. Oh, this is bat bailer, this is. Bloody hell, fire, it's massive. I know. Fair, isn't it? Ah, oh, you should see it. Open it up and you have to put wrapping on it. That's why I said it's got wings. I'll tell you what I'll show you. Go on, then. Right, should open now. You aren't half wrong, are you? Ah. Uh, hey, that's pretty cool. Well, you can just store it all in there. Oh, no, it's really good. Really good. Pushes out the side. Honestly, best thing I've ever had, this is. And the bale collector at the bottom, honestly, makes that Eston bale look like it's uh, something come out of Toys R Us. <laughs> no way. That's awesome, mate. Awesome. 
You liking it then? Oh, I'm liking it a lot. I think I might keep it to be honest, but it's bloody fortune. But it did well with me harvest and I can pay a good deposit to it and get rest on finance. Yeah, well, it works, mate. You're thinking of doing a lot of bailing. Hey, yeah, uh, even clean the massy off for you. <laughs> nice one, mate. But I've actually been out on it, so I've got a bit of dirt on it. <laughs> hey, look behind you. Oh, bloody hell, have you had them bales? Ah, oh, so I owe ten of them to George, I'll have to tell him. Um, I don't know what he wants to do. Hey, I know you did mention he wants to buy some straw off you, though. Well, I'll have plenty of that. We've even got some still in the shoot over here. Loads out in the field. I've done about, what, four fields, I think, now. Three left. Yeah. hell. Let me give him a call. All right, then. I'll arrange what he wants to do with them. Ah. Uh, He'll answer. Hello? Hey up, George. You alright? Ah, I'm alright, you? Yeah, I'm just looking at the bat bailer. Oh, bloody bat bailer. What are you on about? <laughs> That's what we're calling it. It's got wings. Bloody wings on a bailer. What are you on about? You're bringing me up, confusing me. You've got things going through my mind. I couldn't be confused like that. <laughs> Don't matter. Right, anyway, I'm with Jerry, and he's had them hay bales. Oh, what? Well, you owe me ten, you know. I know, that's why I'm ringing you up. Well, I'll have to go and grab them. Unless you want to drop them off. What do you want to do? Do you want to drop them off or do you want me to come collect them? Uh, if you could collect them, that would be better for me. Yeah, I will collect them. All right, well, you can do it tomorrow then. You can come collect bales. I'll come collect them tomorrow, he says. Oh, it works for me. Do you want any straw, George? Because he's, he's doing a lot of straw right now. Uh, put me on to him a minute. All right, I'm, I want to speak to you. Oh. Hey up, George. Yeah, I've got plenty, mate. What do you think you'll need? Uh, well, I could do that. Easy, yeah. All right, I won't. I mean, I will have them, but they'll be out on fields, so I don't know if you want to get them at a later date. Oh, well, if it's no rush, then we'll organise it in the future, eh? Right, and 20 bells. Yep, yeah, I'll do that for you. It's good money for me. Yes, I'll do a good price. Bloody hell. <laughs> Hurry, and I'll pass you back. See you later. There you go. Hey, mate. I'm going to have 20 bells off him, so we'll, we'll, we'll organise it later today. All right, mate. Right, I'll even do it anyway, and I'll see you when you get back. All right, and give me a ring if you need me. Ah, oh, will do. See you later. See you, mate. What happened anyway? Ah, oh, bloody hell. Went up Ross's yesterday evening. Actually, we were like about half, well, we were about, I don't know, a quarter through on, on the last field of the OSR. We were harvesting, me and Keith. And, yeah, me and George went up to Ross's, and, yeah, it's bloody mental, to be honest. He had this letter... And it was a logo that I saw when we first moved into Court Farm. It was, like, stuck on the front of George's house. This kind of weird alien thing. But I'm sure it had, like, a globe around it. Like, it was dead strange. He obviously got him off his house and, you know, like, he didn't want that sticking stuck on the side of his house. <laughs> Unlike his John Deere ones that he can't get off now. But, yeah, it was like that. And then there was just a threatening letter to, to Ross, but it mentioned George. It was weird. It was like a poem almost, you know well written and yeah it was just a threat and it mentioned about fire and stuff bloody hell really yeah and it was against farming so you need to keep your wits about you bloody hell thanks for letting me know that's worrying isn't it it is Jerry it is mate I had police up today talking about it giving them the letter see if they can get fingerprints so but well at least he's done it right then this time and got police involved yeah, I know. But he's in her happy, so... Keep an eye out for that one. Stay tuned. Oh, God. I hope not. He's got... He's a clever bloke, George's, but sometimes he goes off too much emotion. He needs to take five, calm down, and think, you know, there'll be a better way. <laughs> I'll let you tell him that. I'll tell him, but if you'll listen, that's, that's the question. <laughs> anyway, let's not try to talk about that. Trying to get away from it in my mind. I'm looking forward to trying this out, though. Oh, yeah, that's it, yeah. Get in. Head out. It's the bottom three field. You'll see them. It's the other ones are straw in. Just crack on and, yeah, let me know when you're done. All right, and is there anything else? Uh, I've added a few panels inside the ATS. Have you? 
Oh, I've uh, modernised it a bit, so got a better GPS in. You can see it as well on monitor, and I've got a few other things, so yeah, you'll probably notice it. All right, mate, sounds good. All right, then. have fun. Yeah, will do. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Right, let's go open these gates first. Bottom three fields, he said. It should be pretty easy to notice. It's the only ones with straw in, but... I'm going to try to figure out how to close them panels. <laughs> Immense machine, isn't it? I mean, if it was this machine that I was using, then, yeah, I wouldn't mind <laughs> having a square baler. Um, bloody hell, how do I do this now? Is that it? Yep, that's it. Job done. Right. Let me just check the back of it again. All hitched up. Everything's in. That's all connected. Right, let's just take a steady drive in. Oh, wow, look, he's got GPS there. <laughs> I bloody love this tractor, I do. Stunning tractor. That's another one. I tell you, this road, probably one of the most busiest roads in the whole of Bamwell. Another car. <laughs> right, that's me doing. I'm going. Got no one behind me. Oh, there we go, right. So the bottom three fields, yeah, you can see it. Look, it drops in threes just like the other collector does. What a beast. Just trying to see which ones have not been done. He yeah, has done quite a few. That's. This will be the fourth field that I've seen done now. So it's got to be these ones, surely. Yep, there we go. We've got some straw. I feel like this sounds a lot better. He souped it up as well. <laughs> right, we'll start here on this. The straw looks pretty good as well. Let's have a look at that. Ah, it looks cracking. Right. I'm gonna have to open that up. Let's just sort that out. Right, the collector's all set. That should lower it down. Yep, and then we should get turning on. So let's just crack on with it. Let's pick up this. Get start doing some bales for Jerry. I mean, it'll be easier to collect them with him dropping in threes as well. You know, some of this as well will be bales that we pick up. 20 bales. That's a lot of bales, that is. <laughs> Hope he's got enough for himself. He should do. some tunes on and just focus at the job and it's nice just to chill out and get away from it all for a bit you know I'll probably be doing this for a three three four hours something like that if I'm lucky well I don't mind soon enough it'll be winter again and I'll be I won't be out and feels like this again so make the most of it while you can Leveling out there. Oh, anyway, what is it? Quarter past three. God, I've been out there a while. But finally got it all done. What a bailer. I don't know what else to say. It's just. It's outstanding. By far the best bailer I've ever used. It makes easy work of it and it's perfect. Perfect bailer for this Massey. Uh, 
Let's go speak to Jerry though and just tell him we've done it. He's got a lot of bales that need collecting. I don't want to do in that. <laughs> I'll leave that job for him. I know George is probably going to want me to get out in them fields anyway soon and start sorting it out. We've got potatoes as well next month. But yeah, what a stunning bale. I hope Jerry does get it because I'd love to have another go with that. Hey up, Jerry, you alright? I didn't see you there. Well, I just saw you pull up, so I thought I'd come out to you. What do you think? God, where do I start, Jerry? She's a beast. <laughs> I told you you'd like it. Like it? Best bill I've ever used. I know, it's impressive, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, if you want my recommendation, you've got it. Where do I sign? <laughs> I know, I know. We'll see what we do. I'll get a quote from him and... See what, you know, it's like repayments. Just don't want to pay a lot on finance, you know. Yeah, it depends what interest rate they give you, innit? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can put down a good deposit, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, I think, uh, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. But I like it, and I'm glad you do. Well, it's, uh, he flew through that and made easy work of it. I'm definitely calling it the bat bailer, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, forget it. That's it. We can go at the bat bailer. You need to get like a Batman sticker on the side though, if you do. <laughs> All right, then I'll do that. Ah, uh, if I buy it, right, I'll buy a Batman sticker and put it on side. It'll make you and George laugh. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would. Right, you got a lot of bales in the field though that you need to collect. Ah, uh, you do them all. Yeah, every field's done now. Ah, uh, don't worry. I'll get them collected. I'll get one of the other lads help me out. I'll probably take all day. I've got a fair few. You definitely have. I mean, I was thinking 20 bales to George is a lot, but after, but seeing what you've done, you can easily spare 20. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Sell about 75% of them at least. Don't need that many, do I, for the cows? Nah, not that many. How, how are your cows anyway? You doing all right? Oh, doing really well. Yep, doing well. Feed's going down a bit, but yeah... You got a bit of rain, and I think uh, I should be set for winter then, so I'm hoping to get another cut in and then uh, get some hay sorted. But hopefully, you know, I'll have that bale if I want to do it. Yeah. Why don't you sell both your Eston balers? Oh, I don't know about that. I'll sell one if I get this, but... I was thinking, like, you know, that flies through it. It really does. And as you've just seen, I've done three fields in a day, so... Yeah, that's true. Maybe I could do. I do like them, though. I don't want to lose out and miss one of them. <laughs> Sound like George now. Uh, anyway, here you go. What's that? Money. What, are you paying me now? Ah, uh, 500 quid there. Bloody hell, fire for that? No, it's not just that. I'll give you a bit of a bonus for helping out the harvest. I did well, so 500 quid there for, for today and the help you've given me throughout the year. Just, you know, a bit of a bonus. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Thanks a lot, mate. Ah, uh, well, keep working hard. I'll keep asking you to come back and I'll keep paying you better each time. <laughs> Fair play. Right, I'll, get, I'll head off then I'll leave you to it. Oh, you sure you don't want to clean this off for me? <laughs> no, I'll leave that one for you. Well, you collect some dust, on it? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh, I'm only winding you up. Go on, get off. See you later. See you, Jerry. 500 quid. A bonus for the year's work. <laughs> Not bad at all, is it, that? He pays really well, Jerry does. If it ever didn't work out with George, I'd know where I'd go next. I mean, George wouldn't be happy, but, well, he's a good guy, Jerry is. Uh, let's head back and see what's happened. I've had no phone calls, so no news is good news. Yeah, where are you? Over here. Hi up, mate. You alright? Oh, I'm alright. You? Yeah. Doing really well. What are you doing? Just looking at these piglets, mate. Just, you know, sat out there for a bit, just clear my head. Feeling better now? Oh, I'm feeling alright. 
too bad. Go up over if you want. Yeah, Alright, I'm. Look for a walk down here or something. Alright, are you sure you're alright? I'm alright, buddy. Just lose me temper, that's all. You know, with things like that, because I feel like. I don't know. Just feel like someone's got to step up to the plate. And uh, I feel like it should be me. George, you don't feel like that. It's not all on your shoulders. I know, I know. I'm just saying, you know. I feel like I want to protect everyone, you know, and do what's right. Yeah, and we all appreciate that, but we're a team, George. Me, you, Fellowship of Farmers, Beanie. Oh, no. Oh, no. I am scared, though. Are you? Oh, I am a little bit. Oh, I think that's what's really affected me. I don't like letters like that. It just seems so bloody ominous and... I don't know why... I, I, like, like bloody Ross said, I don't know why people don't like me. That doesn't do too much wrong, do I? Apart from faffing about and calling everyone bloody bug of this and bloody that. <laughs> uh, well, you do faff, though, so you deserve that and bother about that. <laughs> Sit down here for a bit if you want. Yeah, I reckon. I do like these chairs, George. Oh, they're right, aren't they? <laughs> Made out of a bloody pallet. <laughs> I'm, a bit, I'm a bit disappointed in the padding, though. You know, I've been sitting here a few times. It's bloody thin as hell. I should have got better padding. <laughs> That's because you're sitting on them for too much. No, dinner that, you cheeky bugger. Don't I say that? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> at least at least we're laughing now. Oh, that's true. Uh, hey, did you get on right then at Jerry's? Yeah, spot on. And that bloody bailer, George. <sighs> My God. Best thing I've ever seen, mate. Gotta be that good. Bloody hell, fire. You'd say that about anything. No, I'm telling you. Even Jerry said that he... He would contemplate. He's not too keen on it, but he's contemplating. Getting it, big deposit, getting the rest on lease. It's that much money. It's massive. Honestly, it's like a, it's bigger than a truck. It's massive. Oh, bloody hell. He was on about that he might, you know, sell at least one of his Estons anyway. Oh, bloody hell, why? You like a modern Eston, then? Yeah, it's got Kletcher and everything. It's, honestly, George, it's bloody brilliant. If you got one of them on here... I will never stop doing bailing. <laughs> well, you got no hope. More chance of... Winning Tour de France with pals. Well, oh, that's it. <laughs> you know, one day you'll have your own kids and you'll be saying same to them. <laughs> Do you ready for kids yet, George? Uh, never say never. You never know, one day. Ah, uh, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Uh, <laughs> I'd rather the young lad, eh? Uh, we need someone pass farm on to. DL fire. Doubt you're going to leave me this. If I died tomorrow, I'd leave you this farm. Seriously? Oh, bloody would I'd leave it, you and Beanie. Who else are you going to go to? I've got no one ever. After Susanna died, there's no one. Yeah, I'd bloody leave it you in an heartbeat. I wouldn't even hesitate. DL George. So if it happens, you know, you need to get your own little whippet snippers so you can bloody hand it over to them when you go as well. <laughs> I hope that's no time soon. Ah, oh, you're right, you've got plenty of time left. And what about you? Oh, me? I, I'm alright, I'm fine, I am. You've seen how many donuts I eat. <laughs> I'm fine, I'm bloody made of steel, I am. <laughs> You seem right anyway. Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm just saying if I did, you know. Didn't get nothing, but if I did, I'd leave you farm. I reckon. I appreciate that, George. But let's not talk about it. It's never going to happen. Maybe one day, but not yet. Yeah, exactly. Right, should we go up and see Ross? I've left him in the house way too long. Starting to get nervous. <laughs> Come on, then. Is he right now, Ross? Well, he's all right. He's a bit, a bit nervous, isn't he? But bloody hell, we all are. Yeah, that's true. We'll get it sorted. Whoever it is, they're a bloody coward because they do it through bloody letters. Bloody. Honestly, what is he? Bloody pen pal. <laughs> you got a pen pal, Scroff. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a funny one. 
He's some bloody strange individual, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I agree with you on that. Right, let's give Shaq on Ross anyway. <laughs> Still standing anyway, so we haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Feel better now. Ross! Ross, get here now! What? I'm just having a wash. Hurry up, get here now! What is it? What bloody is it? I bloody hell on fire, I was asleep on sofa. Shut up, Ross, look! What, what, what's bloody hell is that in your hand now? Don't tell me it's what I think it is. I've just seen this on that bloody welcome mat. Did anyone see anything? No, I didn't see anything, George. Act nothing. Let me, let me have a look at... I've had a look, there's no one there. Bloody hell, George. Where was it? It was bloody right there. I didn't see anything. I had bloody asleep. Well, I've not been here, but first let's bloody open it and read what it says. I can't believe I missed the bugger. Honestly, are you sure you didn't see anything? I didn't see a thing, that's why I'm asking you. Same goes for you, Ross. You didn't see anything. No, I hadn't a bloody seen anything. I, I, I've been asleep about an hour and a half and you just shout, shouted me awake. I don't know what's going on. I, I feel like I'm in a nightmare. You're not in a bloody nightmare, Ross. It's just your bloody been shot, woken up. Well, bloody, I didn't see anything. Me neither, George. I saw nothing. I, I went upstairs about 20 minutes ago. I've had a wash and yeah, I didn't even hear anything. Bloody sneaky buggers. Right, let's bloody open it. Oh, God. Don't worry, we got this, right? Let's just see what it says. <laughs> Might be an apology. <laughs> bloody apology, Tenor gave me that, but <laughs> I like your sense of humour. <laughs> it's masking me nerves. Oh, God, I think my stomach's bloody... I think my stomach's turning as well. Well, if you need the toilet, you best go now, because I want to have you run off midway through, bloody, you know, and... There's a mop there if you do anything too quick. I'm just saying. Oh, I know what you'll like. You'll end up bloody peeing yourself. Ah, right, I'm just not going to say a bloody another word. Oh, it's probably the right thing. Let me open this. Ah, it's off them. What's it say, George? Well, it's a lot shorter. It says these violent delights have violent ends and in their triumph die like fire and powder which as they kiss consume what the hell's that mean eh uh, i think I, I i've heard that before i have well it's got more here one more line at the bottom the wheel is come full circle i am here what the bloody hell is this nonsense? I don't want to get that. What's that supposed to mean? There's no threat in that, is there? I don't know. It's maybe. I've heard of that, George. I do. I remember that from back in school. You know about back in school? That first one you just said, that's Romeo and Juliet, that is. Bloody Romeo and Juliet. What's that got to do with anything? I'm on, not in no romance. Ah, and that bloody last one, I'm certain that's William Shakespeare as well, King Lear. Bloody King Lear, never heard of it. I did Shakespeare, both of them phrases. And, I mean, they're both pretty much tragedies. Oh, bloody hell fire. They think they're clever. Well, I tell you this now, they think they're clever. They think they are, but this don't bloody scare me. Bugger em, I say. Bugger em. Bring it on. Ah, oh, bloody hell, fire, George. I don't agree with you on that one. You gotta ring David and let him know. Yeah, George, I agree. Ring him up and just tell him. Well, all right, then I will do. I can't believe I missed him. We need to get them cameras. Yeah, I agree. Ah. Uh... Right, Scroft. I'll ring him up, get, just have a look around for him, go check on Beanie. Yeah, will do. I'll see if I can see anything. Have a good bloody look and ring me and email you see anything. Yeah, will do.
Thank mm-hmm. you.